On the news, gunman abducts AIDS from Kaduna Secondary School. Senate approves 2020 to 2022 MTEF slash FSP ahead of President Buhari's budget presentation. And U.S. reopens embassy in Somalia. Many thanks for joining us on News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Aneta Felix. Six uh, uh, female students and two teachers have been abducted at the Engravers College in Kwaku Daji Chikun local government area of Kaduna State. Now, according to the school buzzer, Elvis Alha Yaro, the attacker struck at about 12 midnight and went straight to the female hostel where the students were abducted. Confirming the incident, spokesperson for the state policeman, Yakubu Sabu, said the gunmen invaded the school through a porous fence. He also revealed that two teachers residing inside the school were also kidnapped by the gunmen. Sabo says a combined team of police mobile force and anti-kidnapping squad have now launched a manhunt of the kidnappers with a view to rescuing the victims. Unknown gunmen have been terrorizing Kaduna State, abducting people, mostly travelers, on the Abuja Kaduna Expressway. It is, however, the first time a school will be attacked by the bandits. The Senate has passed the 2020 to 2022 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper submitted by President Muhammadu Buhari. But just like in the past, the lawmakers made changes to the documents before approving it. The proposed expenditure for 2020 was increased by 700 and 29 billion naira, while the oil benchmark was moved from $55 per, uh, per barrel to $57 per barrel. The Senate also increased the 2020 revenue target by the Nigeria Customs Service by 557.4 billion naira, and that is from 942.6 billion naira to 1.5 trillion naira. It however retained the exchange rate at 305 naira per dollar and oil production benchmark at 2.18 million dollar barrels as daily production output. This followed the presentation and consideration of the report by Senate Committee on Finance and in part, Senate President Ahmed Lawan called for the diversification of the Nigerian economy. The committee recommends the adoption of 2.18 million per barrel as the daily production output in 2020 in view of concerted effort by NNPC and security agency to combat the menace of oil theft, vandalization, the 2.18 million per barrel will be realizable. Two, the committee recommends the adoption of $57 per barrel as crude oil benchmark price for fiscal year 2020. Uh, let me say that a lot of work is, rests squarely uh, on our shoulders, the National Assembly members. We are supposed to be thinking of how to generate more revenue. Uh, let me also say here that we have to task the Federal Revenue Service. Uh, the, the number of Nigerians, both personal or individual and corporate, that are in the tax net is still an infinitesimal uh, percentage of, of uh, the entire population. I think the Federal Revenue Service should be tasked by our finance committee to widen the net so that more uh, taxpayers are brought into, into the tax net, and that is one way of ensuring that we get more revenues. I also need to have an economy that provides uh, jobs for everybody and create wealth, and that is to diversify in the area of agriculture, to diversify in the area of solid minerals, to diversify in the area of tourism. And we have an, uh, a chairman of tourism who is energetic, who is determined, who is focused. The single senator, Rocha Sokoracha, the tourism sector in Nigeria can do very, very well. We expect that you will turn around the, that, that particular sector. We believe that we can, we can get a lot uh, from, from that. But we also believe that we must ensure that our, uh, our procurement process is properly monitored. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari will on Tuesday, October 8, present the 2020 budget to a joint session 
of the National Assembly. This was announced by Adedayo Adeaye, spokesperson for the Senate. Addressing journalists in Abuja, Adeaye says President Buhari will present the budget at 2 p.m. The presentation is in line with President Buhari's resolve to return the country to the January to December budget cycle. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gajabiamila, has appealed to ministries, departments and agencies to cooperate and collaborate with the National Assembly to meet with the objectives of the President Muhammad Buhari's administration. Gajabi Amila, who made this appeal while inaugurating standing committees of the House of Representatives, said legislative compliance will be strengthened to ensure compliance with all resolutions of the House. The inauguration was witnessed by the Clerk of the National Assembly, Mohamed Sani Omolori, in company with the Clerk of the House, Rufus Kiwa. This ceremony had in attendance the representatives of the ministry, departments and agencies, service chiefs, former clerks, former speakers, among others. It is now left for you, the chairman and members, to go forward and show yourselves capable of meeting the responsibilities to which you have been assigned and deserving of the mandate which you hold in trust of the Nigerian people. I charge you to be dutiful in the discharge of your constitutional responsibilities of oversight and lawmaking, taking every care to ensure that at all times your conduct is without reproach and your service is motivated only by considerations of the best interests of our country. You know as well as I do that our country for several years now has been contending with serious challenges on multiple fronts from the economy to national security, social justice to healthcare, infrastructure to the environment, and climate change. This is a time that calls for determined efforts to achieve substantive reform and ensure that our country can overcome its challenges and take advantage of the opportunities that are bound for economic advancement and social development. I trust that as you recognize these realities, your efforts will reflect this recognition and be motivated by it. Let me use this opportunity to appeal to the ministries, departments, and agencies of government for their cooperation and collaboration. It is only through our joint efforts that we can meet the objectives of this administration and keep the promises we have made to the Nigerian people. President Mohamed Buhari has charged the South African government to prioritize the protection and welfare of foreigners living in the country. Buhari made the demand while meeting with President Cyril Ramaphosa on Thursday to mark the 20th anniversary of the Binational Commission, BNC. During the meeting, both leaders reviewed a wide range of bilateral, continental, and global issues of common interest. They also acknowledged the historical and strategic relations that exist between the two countries and emphasized the need to further strengthen the ties of friendship and cooperation. At the end of the meeting, 30 trade and cooperation agreements were signed by both countries to uh, foster bilateral ties. Nigeria has resolved to appeal against the ruling of a UK commercial court urging it to pay the sum of $200 million as security fee. Now, the court gave the order while granting Nigeria's request to stay execution in the $9.6 billion award in favor of Process and Industry Developments Limited, PNID. Apart from the $200 million, Nigeria is also seeking a refund of the $250,000 it was asked to pay to PNID if the appeal succeeds. Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who was part of the federal government's delegation to London last week, disclosed this to reporters in Abuja. He said the government retained international legal firm uh, Curtis Malet Provost for the case. Mohammed also argued that contrary to claims by PNID and government's delegation's trip to London was a successful one. Organized labor in Nigeria is threatening to embark on an indefinite strike action if the federal government fails to implement the new national minimum wage of 30,000 naira in the next two weeks. The decision was announced in a statement signed by leaders of the Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, 
and the Trade Union Congress, TUC. In the statement, the Labour leaders stressed that they have been patient enough with the FG and have compromised their stand on the minimum wage issue without a corresponding action by the government. They are now demanding that the negotiating meeting between the government and Labour groups be held before October 16th, or else Nigeria will be faced with an industrial crisis. The Supreme Court has struck out the appeal of Ambrose Oweru, candidate of the Hope Democratic Party, HDP, against the election of President Muhammadu Buhari of the All Progressives Congress. In a unanimous decision of the Apex Court, read by Justice Mary Peter Odili on Thursday, the court upheld the preliminary objections of the three respondents to the appeal, namely counsel to President Buhari, Wale Olani Pepun, Counsel to the Independent National Electoral Commission, Yunus Usman, and Counsel to the All Progressives Congress, Latif Fagbemi. Justice Odili ruled that Uru and his party engaged in gross abuse of court processes by filing two notices of appeal contrary to the provisions of the law, and that the HDP's appeal has nothing to stand upon and consequently struck out the appeal. However, Counsel to the appellant, Isaac Udoka, explains that the appellants were forced to file two notices of appeal because the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal did not release a clean copy of its August 22nd judgment on time, All the time to file notice of appeal was running out. But Justice Orderly rejected the plea of the appellant and upheld the objection of the respondents to the hearing of the appeal and consequently struck it out. Still on judicial matters, the Lagos State Special Offences Court sitting in the Kaja area has sentenced a former permanent secretary in the Federal Ministry of Labor and Employment, Clement Ilo, to five years imprisonment. Justice Oluwatoni Taiwu gave the sentence after she convicted him on two counts of stealing by converting the sum of 14.1 million naira belonging to the Nigerian Maritime and Safety Agency. Nimasa. The judge, however, acquitted him of the third count of concealment. In his sentence on the first two counts, Justice Taiwo ordered the convict to make restitution of the total sum of money back to the federal government, and that's less than 3.5 million naira already recovered from him during an investigation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. The court also ordered that the funds should be paid to the Consolidated Revenue Fund of the Federation. Counsel to the convict, Thomas Awana, says he will obtain a copy of the judgment, study it, and advise his client on how to proceed. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, in Sokoto Zonal Office, has arrested four officials of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, and that's for allegedly diverting over 84.6 million naira, budgeted for ad hoc staff allowances. The FCC spokesman, Wilson Oajaren, gave the names of the suspects as Hassan Aliyu, Administrative Secretary, Hussein Jaffa, Head of Operations, Abdullahi Abubakar, Accountant, and Abdul Mumin Usman, all officials of INEC in Tanfara State. Now, the INEC spokesman said the arrest was due to a petition by one Abdullahi Nasiru, who wrote on behalf of all presiding officers that worked for INEC during the 2019 general elections in Zamfara State. Masiru had alleged that the ad hoc staff were denied payment of their 6,000 naira movement allowance each for the two elections, and that INEC paid their ad hoc staff in Zamfara State 4,000 naira less than what was paid ad hoc staff in other states, which was a sum of 12,000 naira. The INEC spokesman, however, said that an investigation by the EFCC revealed that none of the 10,500 presiding officers who participated in that election were paid their entitlement. The Wajaran added that the suspect would be charged to court as soon as investigations are concluded. We'll take a break here and we'll be right back. Please stay with us. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose center, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Okay. Do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait a Do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? 
Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app if you want to know how our commonwealth is being expanded by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Corruption not in my country. Cut. All right, what's your name again? Kemi? Yes, sir. Good. Are you ready for us for next week? Yes, sir. Next. No, one, sir. No. What? Look, what we need here is one who can speak fluent English. Give her a chance. I need a angel to hold me. Hold me, my beautiful angel. Cut! It is angel, not angel. Please, I'm done with you. Excuse us. Kemi was far better. It's not about our rendition. It's not about our performance here. By the time she and her friends join us in our hotel rooms, <laughs> you will know how far. Can I have her phone? She has a robust profile. She's a real robust profile. I do not undercut professional ethics. It is an act of corruption. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. Welcome back, and we have Oyin Adekunle for updates in business. Hello, Oyin. Hi, Anit. Please let us know what are the trending stories in business today. Well, Nigeria's outstanding domestic debt rose by 1.26 trillion naira to 13.41 trillion naira as of June 2019, over the figure for the corresponding period of 2018. This was disclosed in the Central Bank of Nigeria's half-year report on federal government's domestic debt. The report explained that the debt stock during the review period comprised the federal government of Nigeria's bonds worth 9.69 trillion naira, Nigerian treasury bills worth 2.65 trillion naira, and treasury bonds of 125.99 billion naira, or 0.94 percent. Others included federal government promissory notes of 707.76 billion naira. Stokok was 200 billion naira and green bonds was 25.69 billion naira. In spite of higher debt stock, the cost of debt servicing declined by 15% to 800.73 billion naira at the end of June 2019, compared to 941.99 billion naira in the corresponding period of 2018. The report attributes the drop to declining yields in the fixed income market during the review period. Well, meanwhile, the Central Bank of Nigeria has debited the sum of $499 billion from 12 banks, which failed to give out 60% of their deposits as loans. The sum was debited from the cash reserve of the banks held by the CBN. The CRR is a portion of the bank's deposit kept with the Central Bank for regulatory reasons. The affected lenders include Guarantee Trust Bank, UBA, Zenith Bank, First Bank, Keystone, and Citibank. Others are First Bank of Nigeria, Quest Merchant Bank, Jais Bank, Rand Merchant Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, and SunTrust Bank. We take a look at activities on the stock markets after this break. Please stay tuned. Well, following the bearish performance from yesterday, the NSC is back on its losing spree today. Key market indicators were down by 0.84%, while market capitalization closed at 13.185 trillion naira, meaning that investors lost over 100 billion naira today. 
overall, the ratio of losers to gainers was 18 ratio 12, while nine equities remained unchanged. And we see that equities from the consumer goods sector um, lined up on the losers chart today, starting with Nestle, which recorded a downturn of nearly 10%. Actually, a 9.99% or 139.40 drop sealed the price of Nestle shares today at 1,255 Naira and 50 Kobo. Of course, when we move on, we see Unilever and, of course, Guinness also posting losses equivalent to 10.92% um, decline. And conversely, to the um, stocks that performed well in the market today, Nigeria Brewery stood against the pressure in the consumer goods sector as it made a rebound today to lead the pack of 12 gainers, followed by Mobile also recovering from previous day losses. And of course, we see Cement Company of Northern Nigeria as well as Ecobank also choking up gains respectively. And in summary, 151 million shares at the value of 2.5 billion Naira were traded in 2,895 deals. And on to foreign markets now. FTSE closed in the reds today, extending its slide actually. And we see that Dow Jones actually made a late rise, 0.20%, making back earlier losses as rate cut expectations increase. Nikkei, unfortunately, is down by 2.01%, and that's pressured by sell offs in um, US shares, of course. And um, that's it from here. It's back to you, Aneta. Thanks for that uh, update, Oi. Moving on now, four police officers have been killed after a knife-wielding assailant attacks the central police headquarters in Paris. The suspect, who is believed to have been an administrative intelligence employee at police headquarters, was shot dead by police at the scene. His motive was not immediately clear, but police sources say there was no apparent link to terrorism and the attack may have been related to a personal affair. The French National Assembly has observed a minute's silence in memory of the slain officers, while President Emmanuel Macron and other government officials have visited the scene of the attack. So after nearly three years of closure, the United States has reopened its embassy in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu. The U.S. Ambassador to Somalia, Donald Yamamoto, said the move was a milestone in the strengthening of ties between both countries and will help advance stability and development in Somalia. The embassy was shot in January 1991 following widespread violence which accompanied the outset of autocrat Mohamed Barre from power by various warlords. Al-Shabaab remains a threat to Somalia's internationally recognized central government, frequently carrying out bombing gun attacks on the country's military and other targets. The militant group says it's fighting to drive out uh, of Somalia all foreign forces and then establish its own government run according to Sharia law. And in sports, Nigeria has been drawn in Group B against South Africa, Ivory Coast and Zambia in the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games qualifying tournament. The two weeks event starting on November 8th will be hosted in Egypt. It will feature under 23 footballers from the selected nations. Winners of the tournament will represent Africa in the Olympic tournaments in Japan. And it's a wrap here on News Now on TV 360 Nigeria. Many thanks for watching. I am Aneta Philip. Bye for now.